Now, how do we get from the bridge to the fingerboard and back? How do we change the sound point? In the first lesson of these beginners lectures, I told you that the most important principle for the bow is the 90 degree angle, the straight bow. That is true. But in order to change the sound point, we need to play with a crooked bow. Here is our 90 degree angle straight bow. In order to change the sound point, we have to move the bow out of the 90 degrees, like that or like that. But never move the bow in its direction now. Listen. Doesn't give any sound and you don't change the sound point. You stay on one point and kill the sound. No. You have to turn the bow but still move it in the sense of a 90 degree angle. Look. Then you get a sound and you change the sound point. You can do it the other way. This way. And back to the straight bow. Now this way again. Again, do not pull the bow in its direction. And don't force it parallel from sound point to sound point. You see, nothing happens at all. But if you play with a crooked bow, but move it in the sense of a 90 degree angle, you get what you wanted. I demonstrate it again, since it is so important, just a bit more fluent. Of course, we don't need in our daily practice, we don't need these extreme angles to change the sound points. It is just a little playing around with it. And you'll see... You can have wonderful results. one note or on a little passage. It's possible to play a crescendo and a decrescendo in one bow. Up or two, we go to the bridge and go back. This way of a crooked bow is the more popular one. We need it all the time. Crescendo to the frog. Decrescendo to the tip. So experiment with it, play around with it. It is much fun and pleasure to control that. Concluding I would like to advise you to combine everything what you have heard with everything. I give you a few examples. For instance, you play the C major scale or any other scale with vibrato.
it can be music too. Then you play the changes of positions combined with a crooked bow. You start loudly and get softly. Or the other way around. Start softly and get loud. Or you play a finger exercise in the three fingers positions. And so on and so on. You have uncountable combinations. Go ahead. I'm sure if you listen carefully to these five chapters and practice diligently and patiently what I demonstrated, you'll have a solid basic knowledge about playing the cello. From here on you can move to scale one or scale two, maybe even to the chapter double stops. I wish you much fun and a fulfilling time working with your cello. See you soon again, take care and so long.